Are you recording? Yes, you are. Good. It's the holiday version of the play sheet, baby. Not the usual setup because it's the holidays. The, you know, gift that I'm bringing to you this holiday season is the gift of not sucking in short yardage situations as shown by the Detroit Lions. Let's go to play action. The Lions are so good in short yardage and it's been a, a big part of why they won a lot of games because offensive coordinator Ben Johnson is great situationally. He understands what defenses are gonna take away, how it's gonna make them weak, and then how to hit that in like a variety of ways. So this is a fourth and goal touchdown against the Bills. We're gonna have Amon Ross St. Brown at the bottom of the screen and he's gonna end up running to the back pylon. Khalif Raymond's gonna come in motion and then when they snap it, he's gonna run to the front pylon. Watch the conflict that this gives to the Bills corners. As Teron Johnson chases the motion across, the outside corner is gonna end up taking the outermost route, meaning that Teron Johnson now has to chase Amon Ross St. Brown all the way to the back pylon. It's difficult coverage responsibility. He has bad leverage at the snap. So we run the play. Raymond in motion, ball snapped, and now Tron Johnson in a bad spot, easy touchdown. Why is it so easy? Well, look at how many numbers the Bills are dedicating to the interior right here. They have two players in the A gaps. That's the gaps on either side of the center, bang, bang. They have two players in the B gaps. That's the gaps on either side of the guards, bang, and then bang, because they have to be worried about quarterback sneak they have to be worried about interior run with Jamal Williams, who like leads the league in touchdowns. So if we give you this under center look, you have to give us interior defenders, take away that quick quarterback sneak, take away that interior run. And because you're using all of these numbers inside, we have the ability to get one-on-ones on the outside, and then we can win those one-on-ones. So now the lines are down three, fourth and one from the 50 against the Jets. Win this game, establish yourself in playoff position. What are they gonna do? You got a receiver in that tight split, right? He's close to the tackle. And then we're gonna send another receiver. This time a Monroe St. Brown in motion. We're gonna snap the ball as he moves across, play action fake. And it's the same sort of like switch release challenge for the Jets as the Bills had. The route against the Bills went like this. That stationary receiver went to the corner, right? He went to the back pylon. And then this motion receiver went to the flat. The Bills switched the releases, right? They're gonna have the outside corner move with the outermost route. And then they would have this corner in motion then end up taking the inside route and chasing it to the sideline. And that was good leverage, right? And then the Lions are able to throw that for a touchdown. The Jets are gonna try to do the exact same thing. Watch number 30 here, Michael Carter. He's gonna signal, hey, they're coming, the switch release, we've seen this before, and they know what the concept is gonna look like, right? So Sauce Gardner gets to the outside, and now watch 30. 30 knows, you, you wanna break to the sideline, you're gonna try to get outside of me, because I have inside leverage. So he starts getting over the top, outside, 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 and it's actually an in-breaking route, right? And so there's, there's already a change up built in. Instead of running this to the corner, they ran this to the inside. So we're already challenging what you expect. We're already showing you that we kinda know you're on top of us, and we're gonna be one step ahead. But that's not even the primary changeup. That's not even the primary issue. The primary issue is this. We have the same interior alignment from the Jets defensive line as we saw with the Bills, right? We got defense tackle in the A gap, defense tackle in the A gap, defense tackle in the B gap, defense tackle in the B gap. We are filling up the interior. We're not gonna let you sneak. We're not gonna let you get that interior run. So when you have all this interior mess, all these players in the A gaps and the B gaps, what gap do you wanna attack in the running game? The C gap. The C gap, right, is between the tackle and the tight end. And the Lions love to get runs into this gap by using motion from this receiver. What you'll get is you'll get a double team. The offensive tackle will come down here on the interior and the tight end will join him, right? So we'll create a wall right here. And then with the motion of Amon Ross St. Brown, he'll step up to the end man of the line of scrimmage, seal him off, and we'll try to get the back right into that alley. So to summarize everything the Jets defense is feeling right now, up three, fourth down, they get a stop here, they win the game. We need to make sure we have all of our dudes up in the interior in case we get quarterback sneak. If they're gonna send us this motion, we have to make sure we're ready for the switch release with these three players. Also, we have to watch out for the down block here from the tight end in case they run it on us and try to get outside in the C gaps. So this is everything that you're trying to handle at this time. And so when we run it, watch the way the Jets players behave. Okay, the secondary handles the switch release, just like we talked about. Now this defensive tackle is gonna to try to win against this double team. This tight end's trying to move the defensive tackle. He's trying to push him down away so that that way they, they, they can run up this gap this uh, unblocked man is worried about the run he's right to me justin jackson i gotta step up to that run okay this linebacker's now all right it's play action pass i gotta sink if there's a route behind me i gotta make sure i get to it and nobody remembers that little tight end right there 
that tight end who just double teamed his block the way he always does. And he just leaks out into the flat. And there's just nobody there. And that's what's really cool about all of this. There's an understanding here, a manipulation of how players' eyes are going to work, what they're going to expect, and what counters they're going to expect. That's on fourth and one. You've got Jared Goff throwing to Brock Wright. You left an a, a edge defender unblocked, and you got Jared Goff throwing to Brock Wright, and you're awarded with a 50-yard game-winning touchdown. The cool thing is that it's these exact principles that show up in other instances of the Lions film. Remember the crazy Penny Sewell third down conversion catch to beat the Vikings? Well, on first down of that drive, they come out of two by two set, Penny Sewell's the motion receiver. That's an offensive tackle who's their motion receiver. What's the first thing they threaten from this look? We talked about it, C-gap run. So they're gonna try to seal off this defensive lineman. Look at all the interior players for the Vikings. They're gonna try to get a block on this edge defender. In fact, it's gonna be Penny Sewell who comes down to hit him. And they're gonna try to get a run up in the C-gap. Zadarius Smith, watch 55, does a great job of beating that block, getting around Penny Sewell, and it's a nice stop first down. It's about manipulating individuals. Watch we get two plays later. Same formation, Penny Sewell now to the bottom of the screen. He goes in motion, ball snapped. What's the end man in line of scrimmage gonna do? Same thing he did before, gonna split these two receivers and try to get inside of Penny Sewell and stop this run. Remember, it's third and seven. The Lions are trying to eat clock right now. They got a lead, they're trying to protect it. And here goes Penny. They won't throw it to him, right? First down. So it's about showing these condensed looks, getting these interior players clogging up the inside, and then finding ways to both attack the C-gap and to manipulate the expected counters to the attacks on the C-gap in the passing game. This is the sort of stuff that's got Ben Johnson on the head coaching carousel. This is the sort of stuff that shows an offensive coordinator understands what he's got to do, and then what he's got to do off of what he did and what he's got to do off of the thing that he did off of what he initially did. This is layers of offensive coaching. Awesome to see. Have a good holidays. Show your family the play sheet. Log into your dad's YouTube and subscribe. Te teach your mom about the Lions offense. It's going to be great.